Gillen did not have a fair trial. That's that's my starting position. I'm so interested to talk to you about this, uh, Ian, because this photo sort of emerged from, from nowhere. It was on the front page of, of The Telegraph. It's excited all sorts of, of, of comments and, and remarks. What, what were you trying to do here? Why, why did you stage this photo and release it in the way, way that you did? Well, I mean, it was taken, uh, I guess, maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, it's not something that's happened. We don't, Yelen doesn't own the house. She sold it, I think, in uh, uh, 2021, sometime well before the trial. It could even have been a twin. I think it was in 2021. Uh, so uh, at the time, the... Uh, we didn't know, she didn't know, if uh, Junior Dufre was going to be a, a witness at her trial. As it turned out, she wasn't. She wasn't called as a witness by the US government. Uh, had she been, that it might have been uh, the, this kind of material and these kind of photographs might have been put to her. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we had seen what she would have said about it. Uh, so that was the original purpose behind it. Now, here we have a situation where, since then, uh, Ms. Dufre uh, has uh, had to admit to Alan Dershowitz, who said that she defamed him, that uh, she may have been mistaken in accusing him. That's very significant. Uh, it's a significant climb down. And it puts into uh, it puts front, square, and center uh, this lady's credibility. The release of the bath picture is just another example of uh, this lady's faulty memory. The point about the Telegraph piece was not just to put a, an image out there, uh, which they chose to splash, and which. Uh, uh, the media, to some extent, predictably has said, oh, it's just a stunt and it proves nothing. But it shows that they haven't read the piece in the Telegraph, because what it does prove is the reverse of what Ms. Dufre said in her uh, unpublished memoir, which is a court document and was released by the U.S. court, in which she says that the bathroom had a beige marble floor and there was a Victorian tub in the center of the room. Now, the plans of this house are in the public domain. There is no Victorian bath. There is no bath in the center of any room. And uh, for her to say that there is, is just wrong. It's just uh, that her memory is wrong or it never happened. So that's what this is all about. It's designed to say, wait a minute, uh, this lady has been believed almost without any uh, compunction by everybody. I'm not saying that she's a liar, but I, because I can't believe that anyone would be evil enough to bring down a, a child, a, a Andrew and uh, make screw up my sister's life and his life and so on. And um, But I think that the other side of the story needs to be looked at by the media properly. And the allegations need to be investigated thoroughly. We only ever hear one side of this story. And uh, it needs to be looked at properly. But I guess what's actually happened in here is this has been reduced not to the plans of the house, but to this suggestion that you were saying no sexual relations could have taken place in that bath because it was too small. And therefore, the sum total of that picture is people saying, well, people could have had sexual relations in the bath if they'd wanted to. Well, uh, Stig, I don't know what your uh, uh, contortions and ability to uh, have a grand old sex time in a bath, but that's a very, very small tub. He's a big man. And uh, the, the guy in the picture is smaller than he is, shorter, less round. The girl had her back to the taps hard. It's ludicrous, ludicrous to think that anybody, let alone a prince of the realm, knowing allegedly that other people are in the house, are going to ha ha have this fantastical arrangement in this tiny little 
Room. It's a, it's a, it's a, in some ways, this is a slightly ridiculous thing to try and understand. But the claim, as I understand it from Virginia Dufresne, was that they, they, uh, he started licking her toes in the bath and then they went off to have sex. Actually, could some, could two people have toe licking in that bath? And, and the answer to that is surely yes. Well, listen, the point about putting the image out there is for people to have a think about that and say, is it likely? Did it happen? Not could it or might it have happened. It's just so unlikely. <laughs> and people have to make their own minds up. The point about this is that whenever uh, Gillen says something, of course, it's dismissed. She's a criminal. Her word can't be relied upon. She, forget about it. She's a narcissist or whatever it is. She's destroyed. I took the view and said, well, look, here is the bath. Here are two people in the bath. They're tight on, knees next to each other. <laughs> You've got to imagine it. 20 years ago, uh, is this really likely to have happened? She can't remember what the bath looked like, but then somehow she gets, she, but she seems to remember that there was a lot of toe licking going on. Hey, whatever. She, this is a girl who's been in that same memoir that I just mentioned to you, has, uh, did a huge amount of drugs, a significant amount of alcohol. I think it's more likely she was just out of her tree. But what, <laughs> but Ian, what candle are you holding for 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 Andrew here? Because ultimately, I, I don't hold any candle. Here's the thing: uh, stick, I don't hold any candle for but Andrew. Here's the, but at here's all. the thing that, that, as you said, Ghislaine Maxwell was not convicted of charges relating to Virginia Dufresne. She was convicted of other charges. So, in in going after Virginia Dufresne, the person actually your batting for is Prince Andrew, not really Ghislaine, because Ghislaine was accused of, all, of other things as well. Well, uh, you, you have to remember that uh, Virginia Dufres uh, ran against my sister in 2016 uh, on a defamation case, and uh, it turned out that although the documentation uh, should have been sealed in that and was agreed to be sealed, and that's the basis on which my sister gave uh, evidence in that defamation case. She didn't take the Fifth Amendment. And then uh, uh, a judge decided that it could be used in this criminal trial. So it's all very well for you to say that uh, this is not going against Virginia Dufre. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, a number of the charges, two perjury charges, came directly out of this uh, out of this defamation case. Now, it turned out that they were not proceeded with, not because they weren't going to be proceeded, but because there was a conviction on the first trial. And for this lady, who's been the most vociferous of my sister's accusers, by far the most vociferous, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Andrew followed on from that, uh, didn't take the stand. She wasn't put forward by the government. It goes straight to, my view, straight to her credibility. But, now, to answer your question about Andrew, forgive me, I, I appreciate it's rather a long circuit of answer. Uh, you know, he is the running story right now. That, again, isn't the running story. He is the running story. And uh, the he's got to take a view. Dershowitz has uh, suggested that uh, uh, he should consider uh, all legal remedies now to get his uh, reputation back, try and get his life back on track. And well, he uh, can't, though, can he? so he in that can't, him because he's settled. I mean, the, the, the way the law works, as you know very well, is once you do a settlement with someone, absent an act of God coming to shift that, he was in his right mind when he made that settlement. By making that settlement. He is confirmed he's willing to make those reparations to Virginia Dufre. That is a, a legal fact now that any form of contortion thereafter is not going to alter. You know, I'm not his legal advisor. Uh, I, I'm sure that there will be some uh, grounds you know, to be able to overturn a settlement like that. I don't know what they could be, fraud, misadventure, whatever. He also has a straight opportunity just to sue her again. So... You know, he's got various routes he's going to have to consider. Obviously, it's high risk and the timing is terrible, but he doesn't have a life and he's been cancelled. So it's not that I hold a candle for him, but I do think that uh, he has, uh, there must be some kind of um, position now that, that, that enables him to reconsider his position vis-a-vis uh, Mr. Dufre, in light of what's happened in other, uh, in the uh, Dershowitz case and uh, other allegations that she's forward 
that need to be examined properly, and they haven't been. Do you think Ghislaine and Andrew are in conversation about this? Is this, a, is this, because as you say, it's, it's slightly in her interest, although she was convicted of sex trafficking with other people, not with Virginia Giuffre. Do you think this is, they're in communication about this, Andrew and Ghislaine? I, I think it's highly unlikely. I mean, I think uh, any, uh, you know, any communication with Ghislaine other than by her lawyers is listened to, looked at. When I have a video call, I know people are on the line. I'd speak to on the telephone. No people are on the line. I can't imagine for a second that uh, Gillen and Prince Andrew have been in touch for years. Uh, so I think that's highly unlikely. Um, Do you but, think he's guiltless in there? You know, I mean, are you trying to establish something? In your view, you know, you've taken the great trouble to, to put this picture out there. You've suffered quite a lot of, of, of opprobrium for it. People have laughed at it. There's been quite widespread condemnation, I suppose, of the Telegraph, the way they presented it. Um, you for putting the picture out there. Um, in your view, are you establishing his guiltlessness as well as your sister's? Or what, 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 what do you make of him in all of this? Then? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's, I think he's got a, a look, I don't know him. I've met him a, a, a couple of times, several years ago through my sister. Uh, I think it's by general admission, his interview with uh, Emily Maitlis was poorly advised and uh, has has caused him an immense amount of difficulty. Uh, and he has lost his position, he's lost his name, he's lost, his, he's lost everything. So uh, just from a, a simple point of view of um, a man's life, uh, I think he's entitled to see if he can get it back on track any way he can. So, uh, and good luck to him. If he can, if the bath picture is helpful, that's great. If it isn't, it isn't. Uh, but I do think that um, the uh, position of my sister on the photograph, which he considers is uh, likely to be fake and which he also thinks is fake. Personally, I, I'm not too fussed about that. I think it's irrelevant. What does it show anyway? It shows a man with his hand around a girl 20 years ago. It doesn't say anything else. She was over 17 at the time. What nonsense is this? I mean, it's just, it's, you know, the Mail on Sunday has now comes out <laughs> and says, oh, it's the real McCoy. Well, I mean, they broke it 20 years ago. It's their picture. They're still having to come out and defend it and say it's, it's real because the photographer did this or the back and the front. And God knows what. It's, uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hard work to try and stand this all up. And I'm just saying that the, narrative has been going in one direction and one direction only. And uh, I am in the business of pushing the narrative the other way, but not on some sort of, uh, because I want to push it the other way, because I love my sister and so on, but because the bath is the bath, the room is the room, it's incontrovertible. <laughs> you can say what you like. That's what it's all about. The picture was designed to grab attention. It's certainly done that. Now we need to look and understand how it can be used properly because it needs to be used properly. People can laugh. I don't care if they laugh. I'm good for them. I've you know, had sticks and stones for many years of my life. So that doesn't make any bones with me. What matters now is my sister's appeal from her perspective. That's going to come on. And you have no and, doubt about uh, your sister. Just, because, you know, again, the Virginia Dufresne thing is one thing. You know, she's not convicted on Virginia Dufresne. She's convicted of sex trafficking of, of other people. She was convicted. She's. Do you have no doubts about her? Do you have no doubts that that, that the appeal should be successful? Uh, Seg, the appeal is not about Gillen's innocence or guilt. She's been found guilty. That is the position. There's no, I can't say anything about it. She's, she's guilty. She's been I mean, convicted. She's in prison. The appeal is about judicial error. Pre-trial, in trial, post-trial. And also the uh, terrible and egregious errors in due process. That is what my sister is appealing but against. You must have a view. Um, or appealing you for. must have a view on that. I mean, that's you know, appeals are technical things. I understand that point. But in your heart, you must say either she is a she is guilty of sex trafficking, or she isn't. And do you believe fundamentally that of all the charges laid against her, all the claims of what she did in her life with Epstein, all the judgments that have been taken posthumously of Epstein, she is guiltless? Can you can you satisfy yourself 
when you're going through all of this trouble to support her for very understandable reasons, but can you satisfy yourself, whatever the legal machinery, she didn't do these things? Or do you not let yourself go that far? Now, I think the, the, the issue, I'm not trying to avoid your question, but I think the issue is this. Guillen did not have a fair trial. That's that's my starting position. Is that because you don't want because to ask? The, is that because you don't want to ask the other question, which is quite a difficible question, which is irrespective of the fairness of the trial, what did she or did or not do over the decades that she is being judged for? Well, you know, we 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 don't know in short because the the, the position is that the prosecution put forward four uh, witnesses, evidence was heard. But my Gillen's uh, case was not allowed properly to be rolled out. You say what you like. So I, I don't want to go behind the judge. You, you can't go behind a jury at the point. The jury has taken the decision. That's it. But what you can do is you can say the basis on which the jury took the decision was flawed. We know that one of the jurors anyway lied about his, uh, his uh, prior sexual abuse history. And you think this picture is one so, step on the way towards establishing that, even though it relates to a different person, a different woman? It's a brick in the wall. It's a brick in the wall. This is, uh, this is going to be a long, long, long fight. You know, Gillen's been in jail three years and uh, she's 61. And uh, it's, this is, you know, the appeal hopefully will be lodged in uh, whatever in a month's time or something like that. And it's going to take maybe six to nine months before it comes on. And it's got to be listened to. Uh, and then we, we, we see where the chips fall. And um, in the meantime, everybody, uh, all the predictable people, the lawyers for the, uh, uh, the victims, uh, psychologists, uh, you know, commentators by the by the dozen have come out and and uh, have, have basically have said, Gillen is a monster because Epstein was <laughs> Epstein was a monster. There's no issue about that. But uh, the fact is that uh, the appeal is running and it's going to come out, and we'll see where that where that goes. If Andrew has his own, uh, he's got to go and take his own decisions. Um, and get on with that. Good luck to you. Well, listen, Ian, it's been fascinating as ever speaking to you about this. Thank you for, for taking the time.